this is David for Big Bits, and this is going to be our third video in the scoring development, and I plan on this to be the final video in the scoring development uh, kind of mini-series within our big series here. And what we are going to be doing is we're going to be adding loops, and we are also going to be adding some bonus points to our chart based on its current values. Now, the reason we're using loops and I've mentioned this in the past videos, if you haven't seen those, please go back and at least watch the last two videos so that you're aware of everything that's going on. I know they're a little bit longer than my normal videos, but uh, this is a pretty big topic overall to cover, and there's a lot of big things going on inside of it that are important to understand, especially loops here. So what we're trying to do with these loops is we're trying to loop back through the previous candles and try and catch this trend where the price is going lower and award it more points as it goes on. That way we don't get the best signal back here. We get it closer to the bottom. Now, uh, in order to do that, what we're going to do is we're gonna to have to create a new value here. Make a section for our uh, indicator bonuses. And let's make one for the RSI. And I made this a float value uh, because I got some errors when I tried to do this before and uh, it needed a data type associated to it. So in order to do a loop in PineScript, it's similar to a C-sharp loop if, if you've done those, but we're going to be using their standard format for the for loop. And it's like this. So if you wanted to loop from 1 to 10, you would make your loop like this. You would want to have four spaces uh, on the next line code goes here. And that would take care of your for loop. Now, if you wanted to break out of your for loop at any point, uh, you would just use the break uh, keyword and I, I used a semicolon because I'm used to that with C sharp. Now, for us to be able to go back and loop back or look at the candles in the past, then what we need to do is we actually need to use a uh, negative number. So if we start at one, it's not going to work. So I'm going to show you how this works and we're going to add points to it. And uh, hopefully it all makes sense at the end. Now, what I used was I wanted to go back seven candles. So let's pretend we're looking back here at this huge dip. And we're on this particular candle, and we want to look back seven candles around here. And we want to see where our um, RSI was at that particular time. Now, to do that, of course, we need to go back seven candles, and the reason I wanted to start with the negative seven is because uh, I want the highest or the furthest candle back first. Now, if I wanted the first candle first, uh, that's easy. I just start with one and go backwards, but what I want is I want to start with the farthest candle back first and then get closer. Now, I'll set that to negative one, and we'll go up by one. Now, what that's gonna do is that's gonna set us seven candles behind, and each iteration through the loop is gonna go up by one. So it's gonna go one candle to negative six, negative five, four, three, two, one, until we get to the current candle. So how are we going to give it bonus points. Well, first thing we need to do is we're not going to give it bonus points unless its RSI is less than 35. And because that's where we did with the actual points up here, we had to make sure that the RSI was less than 35. Why would we give it bonus points if it wasn't already less than 35 as well? We want to see that the RSI is still below those numbers. So let's go back to our RSI. So in this particular instance, let me make this the whole screen here. So once it dips below 35, 
we want to continue adding more and more points the further below 35 it is. So not only do you get the points for how far below 35 it is, you're also going to start getting more and more points added on the lower it is. And these are going to be cumulative. So the farther back it stays underneath of that, the more points you continue to get. So we're under 35. Now, how do we check? Well, that's for the current RSI. And I apologize. I, I should have done this when I started typing it a minute ago. We want to get that candle back. But if we just pass in I, it's going to be negative 7. It's a zero-based index that only goes into positive integers. So that's not going to work. We're going to have to call the absolute value of I. So to convert that negative 7 on the first iteration to an actual 7, it'll go back those seven candles to the eighth candle back. Now, this is how we look back in the past. We're looking now at the seventh candle back, making sure it's below the 35 value RSI. Uh, and to make sure that this is still valid, so to make sure we didn't have a huge uh, jump in the RSI and the price jumped along with it, we also want to make sure that the price continued to go down. So what we're going to check is we're going to check to make sure that the current close is actually less than the close I periods back. So we're not only are we checking that the RSI back here, if it was below 35, but we're also checking that the close in the price was below that as well. So it just kind of confirms that we're giving this bonus points because the price continued to drop, even though uh, we were correct in noting that it should have been worth points below 35. So let's go ahead and continue here. We're working with our if statement. We need to give it another four spaces. I believe that was correct. And now we are going to use our RSI bonus value and we are going to set it equal to, now to reference the value outside of the if statement, we have to use this colon equals, and you would have known that if you had watched the other videos so far. Uh, it's way back in one of the earlier videos where I covered the if statements. Now, uh, I believe we also covered functions with those as well, but for this, we're going to set our RSI bonus now we also need to include its bonus already so that it's cumulative and then we're also going to add on top of that the uh, the value of the current candle back now i on the first iteration is negative seven so with the absolute value of that it'll make it seven so if it's true on the very first candle that um, our current price is below that candle's price which it appears to be and the RSI is below 35 which it appears to be it'll give us seven points now in the next candle if one of those conditions weren't true it just wouldn't add any points but we would still have seven bonus points for the current candle and then it continues on, and as the price continue to drop, those points continue to accumulate as a bonus for the current candle. So that means your points are going to continue to go up. Now they may fluctuate a bit, but for the most part they're going to continue to go up. Now there's ways we can take care of averaging that out, but uh, for now we're still just doing an example. So hopefully this will make more sense uh, how it is. Now we don't need this break line here. And with our total points, we also need to add in now our RSI bonus. Now, I've already gotten the code for the stochastic. It's the exact same code, just for the stochastic. Excuse me, just for the stochastic. And I'm going to paste that in here, but I need to fix the capitalization because I was kind of lazy earlier and I did not do it correctly. Give me just a moment. This will be a lot quicker than if we did this with live canning, uh, with live coding, excuse me. Or, uh, yeah. If we had coded this all again, 
we would have had to have done this anyway, but we're saving a little bit of time by not having to type all the conditions and stuff. Got that. Now let's add those stochastic bonus points in on our total points as well. Save it, and you'll notice there'll be a lot more points here. If I did it correctly. Ah. I also wanted to use this stochastic D, and of course I did not capitalize all of those. My apologies. Thank you for holding on and waiting right now. It's hard to keep up with all of these different variables between everything that I'm working on. Okay, I believe that has it. And uh, actually, um, what I wanted to do was I wanted to use the stochastic D. Uh, now, the reason I wanted to use the Stochastic D is because it's a little bit slower and uh, it'll stay at a lower level longer. And if we're trying to catch that drop, even if it continues to go up on the K, the D will still be lower. So that's one of the reasons I wanted that one. Now, let me see. Uh, of course, I referenced it wrong still here. The joys of live coding. Okay, that took care of that. So you can see our value is actually a lot higher here now. But uh, how do we make that even higher? Because uh, it looks like it's still even lower point values than that, and it's hardly any higher than that. And there was a dip in between here. Uh, but honestly, it wasn't a terrible time to buy uh, any time it got below or it got above a certain point here. They seem like decent times to buy. I'm going back, you can check. They're actually pretty decent. Uh, of course, that was during a bear market, but it did correctly kind of call an uptrend there. Small one there. Uh, it's a very good one here. That one probably wasn't high enough. Those probably weren't high enough. But you get the idea. It's kind of helping you here by combining all of these different points together based on your confidence value. The lower those values are, the more points they're worth. And looking back and accumulating all those previous points, it starts making a difference. And you can see these points uh, are, are adding up to a value that's going to be helpful. And you can imagine a scenario where you have different indicators that you're more familiar with that you know uh, how the points should be weighted and uh, how you can come up with a scoring system to work for you. And that's what this little mini series is all about here with the scoring development is to kind of help you with your own point system if you want to do something like that. Now another idea that I, I came up with when I was doing this was to use these points that we've come up with uh, similarly to how we used our stochastic and our RSI bonus to reward the candles that have higher points cumulatively like we did with the price drop. So if the price continues to drop and we had high values before, why should we continue uh, to not add points to them? The farther you go along, the more valuable they should be. So just based on our points alone, we're going to add more points on top of it. Now to do that, we're actually going to have to come up with a, a new total here. And let's just go ahead and copy this code. Uh, yeah, let's copy that code from the stochastic. And we're going to call this um, self bonus. Go back and change some of the wording here. And thank you for watching this video. I know it's going on for a while, but hopefully you are learning quite a bit. And we have to reference our total points instead of any specific indicator. Our indicator is our total points that we're using. And we also need to change this from a P to something else because it's already being used in that particular loop. And we also have to change the references to it. Excellent. There we go. And we need to change these as well to the self bonus. Uh, 
Excellent, that's got that. Now we need to plot another total, and that is going to be our total points plus our self bonus. And let's color this one uh, blue. All right, so let's try and save this. Hopefully it works. Ah, it worked. I don't believe I did this correctly. Uh, no. <laughs> okay, I know exactly what I did wrong here. But you can see it does apply bonus points, but it's only doing it to the ones below 35. I actually meant to give it bonus points for the ones above uh, 50. 50. Yeah, 55 or 50. So we actually need to change the uh, condition here. We need to make that only give bonus points based on previous candles that were above 50. Ah, and now you can see, uh, even though there, there was that kind of jitter there, it continued to go up as the price continued to go down. Now, you notice there's a huge dip between those. It's going to be kind of hard to avoid because the price did bounce. But uh, in this particular case, maybe you can zoom out on the chart to, say, a three-day candle. And it makes a little bit more sense. So thank you for watching. Uh, please leave a like if you like the video and subscribe for other videos similar to this. Going forward, we have a lot of different things to cover. I've got a lot of ideas for PineScript, but uh, there's also going to be other video series on smart contracts. I'm going to start uh, sharing some practical examples on those soon, hopefully. Uh, if I haven't already by the time this video comes out. And if you want to get the indicator that we've been working on here, I am going to end up adding it to my TradingView profile. That's BigBits.io on TradingView. The link should be in the description for the video. But you can see all the other scripts that I've done and take a look at those. And if you're curious about any of those, I've pretty much made a video for all of them. And you can go back and look at all of those videos. But uh, thank you once again, everyone, and have a nice day. Thank you.